Hi, hello. Welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is June the 7th, 2024. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. Um, hopefully this energy catches you, put some wind in your sails, whether you know, you're know you listening to this on a Friday night or you're just catching it whenever. Uh, I hope you get that positive vibe, that positive energy. Uh, let's see. For me, man, today was nice. It was nice to just have a normal work day. You know, no, no problems, no, no cat, you know, no, nothing crazy, no casualties, no, nothing wild. So, um, that was good. I really enjoyed that. Uh, let's see. Food corner. I had a, I made spicy garlic Korean fried chicken with some white rice and some egg rolls. It was a very good. It was very yummy. It hit the spot for sure. Uh, let's see here. Uh, is there anything else I really wanted to cover on the personal personal tip? No, I, I think we're good, actually. Uh, let's see. Let me go ahead and, um, yeah, let's do the startup, and uh, we'll go ahead and get into it. I actually uh, feel like the first half of this episode is going to be pretty heavy, so a bit of a content warning there. I know I don't do that a- enough, but, uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, true crime, true crime shit, and I uh, want to touch on a local update that kind of hit today so yeah let's just go ahead and get and bear down on that and then we'll get through some other news get to some other news let's just say i'm sorry actually um do that okay all right let's tee it up Oh, actually, I did have some news that was kind of cute. Fun fact, TikTok now allows you to upload content of up to uh, an hour. So uh, guess who is now on TikTok? Uh, Me. Yes. Uh, Granted, I've said this before. I've been on TikTok. I've just never posted. Not a damn thing. So we are now going to try out uh, uploading the new episodes, uh, at least from the last episode onwards. Hopefully, if I remember, knock on wood. Um, So yeah, I mean, if you're a a TikTok user, you can now maybe find the episodes there. Uh, It's very low-key, incognito, no big deal. But like, you know, figured, hey, it'd be a nice way to extend my my reach. I'm sorry. But, you know, be easy for you or maybe your friends to, to follow me. Um, I don't know, but I, I, I literally was just just giggling all night because I, I realized this at like four in the morning. I'm like, wait, I can upload a whole video and it's not like a like a like a minute banger or something like because that's always been like my beef with TikTok. It's, it always felt like super vine or something like that. So, yeah, I guess I'm I'm supporting the problem now. I'm supporting the CCP app now. Shit. I'm about to go to the I'm about to go to the Capitol right now. Fuck. No. Anyway. OK. Whew, little levity. I, I needed that. Um, from USA Today. Gilgo Beach suspect charged in more slayings. New evidence called A Blueprint to Kill. I feel a Blueprint to Kill is a hard-ass book title. Um, Rex Hewerman, the man accused of killing four sex workers and dumping their bodies on Long Island's Gilgo Beach in New York, was indicted Thursday in the slayings of two more women as authorities revealed disturbing new evidence, including a planning document allegedly found on Hewerman's uh, computer. Hewerman, 60, was arranged in Suffolk County Court in the deaths of Jessica Taylor, 20, whose dismembered remains were found days after she disappeared in 2023, um, and let's see here. And Sandra Costilla, 28, whose body was found in 1993. He now faces two additional second degree murder charges. Uh, let's see here. This has been this year has been 21 years since she has uh, she was taken from us. Longer than the chance she got to be alive, Jasmine Robinson, Taylor's cousin, said at a news conference on Thursday. I can't express what this day means after waiting uh, and hoping for answers. Uh, let's see here. The new charges came just weeks after authorities renewed searches for of Hewerman's home 
uh, in Massapequa Park and a wooded area on Long Island where human remains were found over a decade ago. Sorry, I'm having technical issues with this page. Bear with me. I love USA Today for that. All their ads just like, just slow down the whole site. Uh, investigators found new evidence, including a document on a hard drive recovered from Huerman's basement that they believe he used to plan the murders, according to a superseding bail application emailed to USA Today on Thursday. Uh, the task force believes this is that this is a planning document and it was utilized by Huerman, excuse me, to methodically blueprint and plan out his kills with excruciating detail. Suffolk County District Attorney Ray Tierney, or Tierney? I'm going to say Tierney, said at a news conference. Um, so kind of just getting into at least a little bit of the guts of the uh, document, if I can pull it down. Oh, maybe. There you go. Uh, the document lists supplies including saw cutting tools and photo film and a DS, which investigators believe stands for dump site. It also contains a dispose of the following uh, section and a note. Hunt too long, seen in an area too long. Another note says that more sleep and noise control would allow for more playtime, which prosecutors says refers to sexual mutilation. So yeah, I mean, between these documents and now the extended timeline of these two murders, it seems that like now it like that adds to about thir- like 30 years total, at least, that now we know that this guy has been doing this shit. Um, I really don't want to get too much in the details of like the other victims or the MO, or how they got him. It's available on this article if you'd like to catch up and read. But essentially, he has been doing this for so long. And like in part of the documents, it talks about like, it maybe even gives like some insight and in, like how he was kind of ramping up. Like it looked like he was really into like, you know, torture, pornography, things of that nature. Uh, so definitely really dark, uh, twisted stuff. He also, um, some notes from the document were sourced from Mindhunter inside the FBI elite serial crime unit, a book by retired FBI agent John E. Douglas and author Mark Olschlacher and about the psychological profiles of serial killers and mass murderers, according to court documents. For example, uh, prosecutors say one note from the document that reads, look at the painting, references a passage from the book. If you want to understand the artist, the perpetrator, you have to look at the painting, the victim. Um, Though it's said that he's kind of doing these kind of things, he's taking these kind of notes to not better himself or like augment his behavior in any kind of positive way. It's just more or less he was using this to like try to dodge the cops or like at least be socially normal, normative. I don't know what the word I'm looking for here is, but essentially blend in and, uh, you know, evade capture. But I mean, it, it seemed that more or less authorities were onto him, but they wanted to make sure that they got him. And um, it, it seems that like these murders that they have, uh, that they are trying to get him for, these are ones that they feel like we're iron tight here. Like we can't lose on these. So I'm really hoping that this is going to bear fruit, but it almost like it, it's lends to that thought of like, oh, even though we have like what these six now, th- there's got to be probably like more, um, you know. So uh, you know, we'll see what what comes of this shit. Uh, it's definitely you know, more news. Uh, I know I haven't had an update on the Gilgo Beach mur- murders. I was going to say Moidas. Um, so yeah, felt pretty relevant to talk about. Uh, normally I like to save the, uh, local news for the end, but, uh, I really just want to try to just get to this, get through this. It's important to, uh, just, you know, this is local stuff. Um, I touched on it before last year. Um, and like I said before, I usually don't like going through old stories unless it's something that's very relevant. And I feel like, you know, in my town, this was a really relevant thing. So, um, from journal news, John Carter admits Uh, guilt in plea deal in Fairfield fiance's death. Nearly 13 years after Caitlin Markham died and 15 months after her fiance was indicted for murder, John Carter has admitted to his role in the death of of the 21-year-old art student. Carter, who was scheduled to go to trial in about a week, pleaded guilty Friday morning to involuntary manslaughter, a third-degree felony. He faces a maximum of three years in prison. 
Um, now I gotta say, I actually heard this just kind of scrolling through, and one of my friends had posted it, and like more or less just gave like the just a quick rundown. And obviously, everyone was upset. And I saw another friend that was also just very just hurt and shocked because this really was a sweetheart deal that this guy is getting, and for killing someone who you know this is someone that a lot of people knew uh close to a lot of people obviously and, and even so like I've, I've covered these kind of situations before like there's always going to be a family friends who are rocked and affected by the shit so like when you hear someone getting a deal like this it's like wait like what's going on here and i know it, it flips the kind of concept where i have where it's like yeah i hate prison i hate the whole thing and da, 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 da. but this is where i i understand it i get it and it's it, it is frustrating to see the legal system go oh we're gonna do this because we want to make sure we get them and um you know the, the, like they i know that the prosecutor kind of boils it down to like hey we kind of have a bit of circumstantial evidence da, da 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 like this is something that we can just nail down and um it's like okay yeah but the, it just it brings a sense of closure but then it just doesn't you know because you know that in a few years this guy's just going to be out and you know it's a third degree felony for literally killing you know your fiance, then, you know, joining the search party and saying, oh, you know, and, and crying and doing all this fucking crocodile deers bullshit. Meanwhile, you're journaling about this shit, if I'm not fucking mistaken. I mean, this was just some shit that really rocked the town. And um, I really don't want to get too much in the details of the flashback. Um, but, um, you know, I just wanted to at least get, uh, you know, at least the, the coverage of the, the plea deal. Because, I mean, like I said, it kind of just came out of nowhere. The trial was a about to get started and essentially i think he just said okay no i'll take this deal it still works um let's see yeah the charge is a third degree felony because the underlying crime is a misdemeanor assault which is crazy because we're talking about a fucking murder here uh the cause of death is still you know even to this day i don't think has been uh fully revealed or known um i know it's like uh just there's scant details and stuff like that but um yeah, I mean, it's it's sad. It's frustrating. I know I'm not doing this story justice, and I apologize for that. But, um, I, and I wasn't close to Caitlin. This was just someone I knew. You know, we were in similar circles. But um, it, it definitely is one of those things where it, it, it brings it home for me. And um, it makes me sad, and my heart goes out once again to the family and to my friends that are, you know, really mourning right now and kind of because every time you come back to these stories, it's like opening up that wound. You revisit this whole thing. You go through those feelings and the emotions. You know, she was 22 years old. You know, she had her whole life ahead of her and it was snuffed out by the person that she was, you know, supposed to be her partner. And, you know, she essentially was trying to get out of the situation. And, you know, she didn't get that opportunity. She didn't get that chance. So it's very sad. It's very fucking unfortunate. Um, you know, I get the legal uh, blah, blah, blah bullshit, but that doesn't make it feel good. It doesn't make it feel right at all. Um, you know, I don't know, you know, so, uh, I, I just figured like, Hey, let's just go ahead and get into this, get through it. And, um, I'm going to go ahead and call it covered. Um, but yeah, uh, let's go ahead and hit the next beat. Uh, we're, we're talking about Boeing and we're back to bad news. <laughs> Um, from the New York Post, flames shoot from Air Canada Boeing jet moments after takeoff. We've got an engine fire. Holy shit. Terrifying video shows flames shooting from an Air Canada Boeing jet as it took off, forcing it to abruptly turn around for an emergency landing. The caught on camera terror unfolded after flight AC-872 took off from Toronto en route to Paris late Wednesday. Holy crap, uh, someone recording the takeoff gassed as flames shot from the tail end of the plane just after it left the runway. Uh, we got an engine fire. Holy shit, the man gasped as the flames continued to spark, at times seemingly stretching the length of the jet as it continued to climb. Uh, the flames came from the plane suffering an unspecified engine issue immediately after taking off with 389 passengers on board. Um, they quickly turned around, so that's good. Uh, it doesn't look like there was any casualties or anything like that. 
Um, so yeah, yeah. However, the passengers were rebooked onto another flight later that night, and the plane um, was taken out of service to be evaluated by maintenance and engineers. So yeah, I mean, Boeing Watch is just real. Uh, you know, I, I I won't get too you know in the weeds about this. You know, my thoughts on Boeing. I've I've said a lot. Um, so yeah, I mean, technical difficulties, y'all. Uh, it's crazy. They were able to get the shit to space. I guess a little bit of update there. Uh, the astronauts were able to make it to the space station, so that's cool. Uh, you know, hip hop hooray for that. Awesome. We love to see it. Um, also, I know I kind of got in the weeds about that. I know we're, I'm in the weeds anyway now. Um, about the whole space taxi thing. I think they're, they're, it's space freight, space cargo potentially in the future. But to me, I'm just spitballing when it comes to that shit. Because inevitably, you know capitalism is just going to dookie all over this shit. Even if we go to Mars, we're just going to go there just to put a fucking McDonald's on that shit. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm still a little eh about it. But overall, it, it's still cool. Uh, you know, I still maintain that baseline as well. Space is still rocking. And Boeing is still fucking up. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> anyway, we have one more thing to cover. And this is, you know, certifiable good news. You know, figured we'd just pluck this and, and, and go ahead and end it there. I know the episode's kind of been a little bit of a different order. Uh, but, hey, why not? It's a new stand. It's Isaiah's rules, right? What can you say? Ooh, I speak in third person. That's bad. Don't do that. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> I, I probably will do it again. Anyway, let me do my last break, and we'll go ahead and close it out. Whew. It's warm. It's hot. From the Guardian. Alex Jones to liquidate assets to help meet 1.5 billion Sandy Hook judgment. <coughs> the info <coughs> info wars host Alex Jones has asked a court to sell off his assets to help meet a 1.5 billion dollar defamation judgment against him in his companies over public comments he made claiming that the 2012 Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting was faked. In a court filing, Jones dropped his petition merely to go into bankruptcy, admitted that he has to pay the Sandy Hook families, and has asked the judge to convert the bankruptcy into a Chapter 7 liquidation. So this is good because he's been dragging his heels the whole time. Like immediately after the trial, he's like, I'm just going to file bankruptcy anyway. So like, whatever, it's fine. We're making so much money now. It's, it's okay. We're going to rally. We're going to make it happen. You know, just keep buying tactical tents and whatever the fuck. And, and we're going to make it. Um, so, I mean, obviously this is very unfortunate for the families. They've gone through so fucking much. You, you've lost, you know, your children in this fucking shooting. And then you have this fucking fat goddamn dude who doesn't know how to keep a shirt on. I mean, shit, me neither. But essentially saying, hey, that didn't happen. Your child is a crisis actor. And, like, you guys should be upset about this. And essentially rallying and whipping people into a fucking fervor. And literally these fucking Infowar fan freaks were going out and harassing these people nonstop. Calling, get, like, literally going full gangbusters. Gang stalking, I should say. Um, you know, on, on these victims, on these families. It, 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 it's insane. It's fucked up. And, um, you know, he got a just reckoning for that. Uh, uh, $1.5 billion? Yeah, with a fucking B? Fuck yeah, pay that shit up, brother. Um, I I feel like he's been trying to lean on the whole American kind of get out of jail free card with the whole bankruptcy thing. And hey, I get it. I've, I've been down that route. I've walked that road. But the way it works is... Things like a legal proceeding, a lawsuit, a thing you have to pay, that's still going to hang over your head, brother. You have to pay it. So, um, yeah, I'm, I hope that uh, he loses everything. I hope they take his shirt that he wasn't going to keep wearing anyway. I hope they take it all. Um, excuse me. Ooh, ah, sorry. It's it's pretty much the end. I can burp. I can burp freely and not feel shame. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, fuck you, Alex. You know, like I said, pay up, dude. You owe. Pay what you owe, bro. Uh, let's see here. Is there anything else I really wanted to get into? No, I think we're good. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I want to get before it gets too far behind because they've been talking about it on the news. 
uh, it's like the anniversary of World War II, and like there's not that many veterans left, so like that's kind of a big deal. And like everybody, like you know, came out to like Normandy, and that was like a whole thing. Um, and hey, you know, salute to the troops, what have you. But like, it, it's annoying to hear these politicians bullshit about like how much we've learned from from that war. Uh, war that was supposed to end all wars while meanwhile like all these western motherfuckers are supporting multiple wars so i i just don't fuck with it i i I don't know i mean obviously if it makes these old people who had to go through so much goddamn trauma uh if it makes them feel better to kind of like have like a high school reunion style situation all all be it awesome love that for y'all uh i don't want to yuck your yum but also, I just didn't feel a way about it to actually, like, give it coverage. So I figured, hey, it's at the end of my brain, tip of the tongue or whatever. Here we go. There you go. So I covered it. Freestyle. <laughs> that's it. That's that's all I have. Um, you know, tell your loved ones you love them. And hopefully i see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye. Mwah.